Hi everyone, this is Gail. Uh, this week we are going to be doing a, like, I don't even know what to call it, except maybe a shape or color exchange. I am taking some Sculpey Souffle, and this is called Pesto, and you can use any color. It doesn't have to be this color. But pick a color that you would like to use, and then put a little bit of, take, divide it in half, and then put a little bit of black. That might even be too much. Let me try that. And mix half of this with a black to give you a shade of the same color. Don't try to mix two different colors. It's better if you just take a color and add a little black. And if this isn't enough black, then I'll add this to it. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in the pasta machine and blend it, and then I'll be back. Okay. Now you see that I have got these two colors. It's the same color. This is the Pesto Souffle, but I added some black to this. So we know that these two colors will go together because they're, this is a shade of this color. So they will match. Now I've got some things here that I can show you. Um, this is a, a purse hanger. You've seen some of those if you've looked at my Etsy shop or watched some of my videos. And this is nice to put a polymer clay uh, cabochon on because you can bake the whole thing in the oven. I have these different necklace settings. Um, I have, I've got a box over here full of stuff to cover. I've got tins. And there's lots of things you can do. And if I go with a tin, here's a, here's a um, pill box. The only thing with the pill box is you have to make your cabochon separate because the plastic inside will melt. And I know that because I ruined one. So this cannot go in the oven. So what I would do would be to cut one <coughs> Excuse me. I think if you find a cutter, that prop that fits almost perfectly. Or I might go with one a little bit larger, which is really too big. But it would. You could do either one. This one would fit over it if you wanted to cover over this lip. I prefer to keep mine inside the lip. It doesn't get as much. Um, doesn't get knocked around or anything. But these are some ideas of what you can use this for. And I just wanted to show you, I've got a little box over here full of stuff to cover. And I'm whittling it down little by little. So let me just make a cabochon and I'll decide later what to do. So you, I've got these two pieces and they're pretty much the same size. So I'm going to end up making two of the same uh, same but different. I'm going to make opposite, but I'm going to end up with two cabochons. And let me see how big I can cut. Because I'll start with the largest possible circle. That one will fit both, and I think this is going to be too big. These are my Atico cutters. They come in a... Let's see, the top is still in my, in my drawer comes in a box like this. This is 12 pieces from 7 eighths of an inch up to 4 and 7 sixteenths. So unless you want little itty bitty circles, because this is 7 eighths, the smallest one, but unless you want little bitty circles, that pretty much covers all of them. So I've decided to use this color and I'm going to, I mean this size, and I'm going to cut this size out and I like to pull my clay away before I pick up the cutter. And I'll cut this out on both, both sides. And I just stuck my fingernail down in this, so I'll have to make sure I... Oh, that healed pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is like a cut and replace. 
That's why I was saying you might want to call it an exchange or whatever, but I've used the biggest cutter. Now you can do several things. You can start with the smallest or you can start with the next largest. And I'm not going to be symmetrical in this. I'm going to have these lean more to one side just because that's what I want to do. And I'm going to look here just to see. That might work. See how I'm over to the side? Can you see how close I am? This is my cutter. I guess you can't because I'm over just a little bit. If I do it on this one, can you see that how I'm not in the center? I'm over to the side. And I'm going to leave enough clay there that it's not going to break off on me. And I'm going to cut. And of course it didn't lift out. It's funny how it doesn't lift out when you want it to. Let me get a, well since I'll probably bake this right away, let me get a patty paper and put these on here. This will be the dark, the dark side. Oh, did y'all see the Star Wars trailer? I have to admit, I'm not a fanatic as far as having Star Wars stuff all over the house, but I do love some Star Wars. Let me cut this. It's just stuck to my table too much. So let me use my blade to pick this up and pull out the center. Now what I'm going to do is exchange these. I'm going to take the dark green one and put it inside here. And the lighter green and put it inside the dark one. You just might have to coax it just a little, but with the souffle, it's usually pretty easy. Now let's see where I, let's see, that's my narrow side, and this is my narrow side. Just trying to keep them lined up. So then I'm going to go down to the next smallest, and I think I'm going to stay on that same narrow side. And cut again. Let's see, I can push it up since it's on the paper. And these don't have to be exact, but I'm just leaning more towards one side than the other. Just because that's what I want to do. If you want them symmetrical, just do it in the middle. But this way, I don't have to worry about it. Now, the luck, good thing about this is it did stick, I push, was able to push it out, so I can put it in there. And let me find, I'm going to use the large ball on my Sculpey design tools. I think that's what they're called. And coax it in there. Can you see where we're going? So I'll put that back and then I, I might skip, skip one. And let me do... Now that might be too much. Um... Let me see if that's a little bit bigger. Yes, this is a little bit bigger. This is another one of the Kemper cutters. 
and I, I just love the Kemper cutters. Because it has the little pokey thing. But see, skipping one, skipping a size, gives you a larger contrast here and I kind of like the larger contrast. So now I've gone to my Kemper cutters and these I've got them lined up here. These are my different sizes and I don't know if they have the sizes on them. They go all the way down to no they don't have a size but it's about About an eighth of an inch. So I don't know that I'll go that small. I'll just have to wait and see how it looks. There. Anyway, let me come back in just so you can see a little bit closer what I'm doing. So I used the large one and I had a large area of contrast so this one I think I'm going to stick it'll be just be the next largest size to make another small circle and you can do this with any shape I'm just choosing circles because it's easy it's easy for me to show you how to do it you know, you can use hearts, anything that you've got multiple sizes of cutters for. Don't be afraid to play. And now I think I'll skip another size, which would be this one. So I'll go to this one. You would think these would have measurements on them, but they don't. This one I would guess at three eighths. Let me see how close I am. Pretty darn close. This is three eighths of an inch. I turned that over because this little plunger in here sometimes leaves a mark on your clay. And there is a way, and I just have never done it. You can cut a piece of clay, bake it, and then push your plunger out and glue this in, glue this on, and then the next time you'll have a flat plunger to press it out. I just haven't had time to do that. So I'm just flipping it over when I get those little marks. And see how see how these are and these this is with the green I think I'm gonna do another one with purple and maybe I'll just do one more little one and this one I always have to use the plunger because the little one just that clay never seems to want to come out Get in there. And stick that in there. And I think that's kind of cool looking. Now what I would do, because you want to make sure that all these let all these stick together, you can do two things. You can take a piece of patty paper or wax paper or any kind of paper that you've got. As long as you don't leave your clay on it. This does have a wax side, but even wax paper will leach your clay if you leave it on there. But just for working on it as a surface, it's a great thing to use. But you can just rub it with your fingers to burnish it. And actually, I think I would do it on both sides. 
So since I've got this burnish and it's already on a piece of patty paper, I'm going to turn it over and burnish this side. Let's see, I still see little spaces. I just want to push a little bit around the edges to make sure it is in contact with the other layer of clay. Maybe, let's see, maybe take your blade and go around it like this with your blade, which will press it in. I think what I'm seeing is the lines from the cutters. Yeah, the Kemper cutters don't have it, but I notice these larger cutters, they do have a seam, and sometimes you'll see that seam, and I think that's what I'm seeing here. I think I'm seeing the seam. But I'm just going to go around just to make sure it's in contact, so when it bakes, it will stick. Just remember, raw clay will stick to raw clay. Then the other thing you can do, I was looking on the back, that's got red clay on it. Well, maybe this would be the one to do it. Another thing you can do is to roll, and I've got black here. Let me just roll a thin sheet of black real quick. Now this is rolled out to a number five, and what I would do would be place this on here. And if you know you want to put a backing on it, you can do that at the beginning. Make sure it's on the clay, not hanging off like it almost is over here. See how it sticks to the raw clay? Then you can take the largest one that you cut the original one with. Which this is spread out a little bit since I've been playing with it. Let's see, where's my narrow side? So let me put it over here and just cut off. The narrow side, so it's still narrow. Like I told you, I like to pull my clay away while the cutter is still on it. And if you need anything, just take something blunt or flat. Just something that won't leave a mark in your clay. And you can still do the same thing with this, except you've got a solid sheet on the back that will hold it all together. And you don't have to be so worried about whether these, um, these circles play together. But... These are my two cabochons. I kind of like them. I just need to decide what to do with them. Um, they're probably a little big for a pendant, unless you like big pendants. Wouldn't it be really cool? Now I'm thinking again, y'all. Watch out. But wouldn't it be nice if these were a little bit smaller, and we use smaller cutters, to do this and make a pair of earrings out of them, and they would be opposites, but yet the same color. I wonder how many people would notice. That's what we got to do. So, well, you know, I'm gonna just going to have to do it. So let me put these two aside. I wish I thought about that earlier, except you wouldn't have been able to see it too much if I did them any smaller. But let me, and, and when I, the original circles are all rolled to the thickest setting of the pasta machine. So let me 
do this. Here's my star. I probably could get one out of that, but I'll do it and I'll roll it in anyway. Let's do earrings. How big should I make the earrings? This one is an inch. Is an inch too big? Let's try it. So this is going to be the outside. And this is going to be the outside. Okay, now let's just keep going smaller and smaller and see what happens. And being earrings, I would not put a backing on it because you want to be able to see it from both sides. I'm sitting here trying to think of what I've got green that I could wear these with. Because I just think that is so cool. If, you, if it makes you feel better, feel free to maybe burnish these in between each layer. To make sure that they stick together. And again, you can take your, make sure your blade is clean. You can take your blade and go around and just press a little bit to make sure that they they meet. Let me burnish this one first so that they'll be the same. I think this is going to be so cool. And I'm going to wear these to church on Sunday. If I can find anything at all green, if not I might have to make some in another color. I don't wear a lot of green. Okay, so I used that one. So now I'll use this one. That one, there's not an, a lot of difference. There's some difference, but not enough. So I'll go down another size. I like this one better. See, doing this, I don't have to worry about being symmetrical. <laughs> and you can, that's another thing you can do. I'm just showing you the basic, but you can take these, you could do a solid sheet of clay and do hearts. Okay, so now we've used this one, this one, and this one. So let me do... See the difference? Yeah, that's a good difference. I don't think I burnished it after the last one, did I? Once you get into the center, it's not as critical, but I will burnish just to make sure they stick together. And then I'm going to finish with the tiny one. no idea I was going to be doing these but it's just such a cool idea I 
Come on, little circle. And I think that's, yeah, that was the side that had the mark on it. This one has a little mark, but I can smooth that one out. Okay, then we'll burnish. And I'll do the same thing I did with the others. I'll turn them over and burnish them on the back also. Just to make sure that they all get stuck together so when they bake, some of these circles won't fall out. So I don't have a smaller circle. I'm trying to think. I will use my needle tool or maybe I'll just use this little it's not a knitting needle, it was some other kind of rod that I bought and I forgot what they were for. But anyway, let me see where I want the hole. I think I'll put the hole like right there. Just poke a hole. Can you see my little hole? And do the same thing here. Poke a hole and just make it big enough for a jump ring to go through. And if it's not big enough, you can always do that later. But there's going to be an adorable pair of earrings. So I'm not sure what I would do with these. Those of you that like big earrings, these could make a nice pair of big earrings. But I don't wear big earrings. I never have. I just It's just not me. But those of you that do, go for it. But I wonder how long it's going to take for people to notice that these are two opposite things. I can't wait. Um, let me bake these, and then I'll be back and I'll finish the earrings. Hello, everyone. I'm back now, and I have baked my, my large. I, I did the large one so you could see how it looks like large. These... Uh, sort of a cut and replace type thing and then I made these small ones and I'm going to turn those into earrings so what I've decided to do since I smoothed these with patty paper they probably will be fairly you know pretty smooth so what I'm going to do is use some Sculpey gloss glaze or maybe I'll make them satin. Maybe I'll use the satin glaze. And I don't want to shake the bottle. I probably ought to just stir it. But I'm just going to twirl this bottle a little bit just to get this glaze mixed. Actually, what I should do is get one of my little dowels. that I keep for different things and just stir it. Shaking it would just add air bubbles to it. And I'm going to use my brush to clean off my my little dowel. And I'm just going to glaze this. Now, I should have started on the other side, which I'll do with the other one. I'm going to use a toothpick through the hole that I made just to hold it so it will not go all over the place. And I'm just using the Sculpey Gloss Glaze. Now you can use liquid clay. You know I like liquid Kato. But I think I just wanted to glaze these. This is the back. 
and the back of the hole wasn't quite as big as the other so that's why it chipped off a little piece when I put the toothpick in there. But I'm going to let these dry. And I don't want that to accumulate on there. And while that's drying, I want to show you the different things that I have. I have this box full of nothing but earring findings and a little package of the rubber things for French hooks. I have got just about every kind of earring. Look at this. Just about every kind of earring finding you can find. And these are most of what I've got. I've got these little lever back earrings, which I I personally like myself because I have lost a sterling silver earring one time that was on a French wire and I didn't have the rubber stopper on it and if it had been on something like this it would have it would have been much better see the lever back you put it through your ear and then this just kind of snaps shut behind it so I really like those then these are your standard French wire type ear pieces, ear wires. And they have a little hole on the bottom where you could uh, put a jump ring and then whatever you want on it. I have these big hoops. I had some smaller hoops, but I think I must have used them all. Um, because I, I could only find one, and I think I remember now using all but one. But these are like metal hoops that you can put through um, and then I've got these that are Beetalon, just Beetalon ear wires, but they're they're different. They're let me show you how that looks. See, they're, they're not a thin wire. They're bigger, and they have a decorative front to it. And I think that's what I'm going to use on these earrings. But let me just show you, again, while these are drying and sticking to the paper. Um, if you're going to hang this on an earring, like, say, the lever back or the just the wire, you notice that it's going to go into your ear this way. This part goes into your this part goes into your ear, and this part hangs down. So if you're if you're holding it like you're putting it on, you'll see that this ring goes this way. So if you end up putting this on there, first off, I need a bigger jump ring. But if I put it on a jump ring and then hook it on here, it's going to hang sideways instead of facing the front, which is the way you would want it. So you have to add a separate little uh, jump ring. And that's what I have here. I have, Let me show you some of my jump rings. I have oval jump rings. Those are really nice if you want something to always hang a certain way and in the smaller ones to connect them. So if I were using this, I would put the little um, jump ring on here. I'd put the larger, this is just a round one, but I'd put the larger jump ring in my jewelry and then connect the two. And that way, it'll be fa the your disc will be facing frontward. So that's something you have to remember when you're um, when you're putting these together that you want them to face the right direction. So let me do finish this one by doing the other side. It's about dry. Doesn't take long for this sculpy glaze to dry. And if you want to put multiple layers, you can. It's best to put a very thin layer, and if you want it 
more glossy, just add another thin layer. But don't put it on thick because it gives it sort of gives it an artificial look. And this is the back of the other one. If I can, can't do anything with my left hand. Okay, I've had, and I did have another development after I got off the, uh, after I finished recording. Actually, this is two days later. So when I got off from recording, I got an email from Amazon offering me a free Amazon influencer um, page. Now, I don't know if you know what an influencer is. An influencer is usually someone that has a large following in a particular field. And sort of like you, I'm always answering questions, you know, where did you get this and where did you get that? And I tell you, you know, either where I got it or where you can get it. But they have given me my own... Um, my own Amazon page and I can put products on there that I use and if anybody buys those one of those products it doesn't change the price for the person buying it but I get a very small commission on it but it could add up so please I'll put the uh, link below in the description but I'm really excited about that because you all know I have had some financial issues lately and some big losses that I don't even wish to talk about on this video and um, so every little bit helps now I'm going I'm just trying to get this to dry I probably ought to hang this probably would be a good idea to hang it on the wire. Then I have both sides that can dry at the same time. But see, this is how it would look hanging on the big hoop if you wanted to do that. If you did this, I would suggest putting a little bead on either side just to decorate it a little bit. But I'm just going to hang this up over here. and let it dry and I'll be back as soon as it's dry okay it didn't take long for these to dry it's only been about five minutes and this was the satin glaze so I want to show you it's not real real shiny but it's shiny enough so what I'm going to do is use these let me come out just a little bit use this setting and what I did is I bent this side out see this this was up straight like that and I bent it out and I'm going to just slip this on and I'm going to bend this back and only do this once don't do multiple bends or you might end up breaking it There, so there's one. And you can watch me do this one. I'll bend this out. And I don't pull I don't pull it out this way. I bend it straight down. So I have that on and then I can bend it straight back. See this one didn't go quite, I might, might have bent that a little bit too far, but anyway. This one doesn't seem to be 
this is the one where the back hole was not quite as big as the front and I should have done that before I put this in but I don't want to stress there that's much better but there is the earrings here are the earrings and I'm going to wear them on to church on Sunday and just see what people think so what do you think do you like these just imagine you could do a pair in every color. You could do purple and red and white and black. And with the black, instead of adding black to it, you would just add just a little bit of white until you get the color gray that you want. You could also use different colors. You could use yellow and orange or blue and purple or whatever, you know, instead of using a darker shade. But I just wanted to show you how to make these earrings. And I hope you like them as much as I do, because I really do like these. And I will be back again next Monday with another Polymer Clay video. Please visit my Amazon store, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.